themselves, but the plant itself has mechanisms. So one thing I think that's important before we get into plants or how they defend themselves with the viruses is what are the direct uses of plants in our lives? Like how do they directly impact us? Why are they so important? So some of these are really obvious. You have food, for instance. I don't really have to explain that. You have like all cloth fibers, those come through cotton and other plants. You have um, wood, which we've pretty much used for building anything throughout time. Then you have uh, fuels like biofuel from ethanols. And finally you have um, medicines like morphine for surgeries, which come from poppies. And another topic that we'll be discussing in the speech, but I think it's important to get a quick run through here, is evolution adaption. And so when you hear these words, you probably imagine Charles Darwin, or maybe like how an animal has uh, evolved to camouflage, or maybe how bears have adapted to um, hibernating in the winter, or maybe birds and their various beaks. But what we're going to be discussing is plant evolution against viral pathogens, and how all these have come to be, and what they specifically do. So. Um, working in a lab the last six months here, I think I'm pretty qualified to inform you guys of this, and I think I know enough about it to give a good speech here. So, the three ones we'll be discussing are R gene mediated resistance, which we're just going to call, call R genes um, to keep it simple, and then hypersensitive response, or HR, and finally, callous deposition. And so, the first of these uh, is R genes, and we're going to kind of go through and discuss them by using two analogies to make it kind of more understandable, I think, and easier to grasp. So, our genes function as like a lock and a key, and then also as a family doctor, which we'll get into discussing. So, a lock and a key, what we mean by that is that our genes function on a gene for gene resistance. So, genes produce proteins, and so for each R gene, there's a viral gene that it's specifically made to counter. So, they'll both produce proteins, and the goal of the R gene protein is to go out and seek out that viral protein in order to make the plant aware of it. They're like indicators. And so it needs to be a perfect match where the lock and key comes in. If a virus adapts at all, the R gene needs to adapt accordingly in order to detect it. And so this brings us to the family doctor. And what I mean by that is it's like a first line of defense against pathogens. They're kind of like the yearly checkup. They go in, they say, hey, there's an issue here. There's some kind of pathogen. And then it'll pass it off to a specialist. So that can be hypersensitive response, which we'll be discussing here soon or maybe the closure of the stomata, which is like a natural pore in the leaf. And by closing that up, um, it can stop more pathogen from getting in or producing specialized chemicals to stop that pathogen in a certain way. So now we'll get into hypersensitive response. And the two ways, um, two analogies we'll use for this one is sacrifice, which <laughs> a little gruesome image, and then um, the Great Wall of China. So for sacrifice, what we mean by that is that um, once the virus has been located through our genes, right? Our genes will say, hey, it's here, it's right here, we need to deal with it. What will happen is that the plant will purposefully kill off the surrounding cells in the area. It's not the virus killing the cells, but the plant will purposefully commit like <laughs> self-harm, I guess, in order to stop the spread of the virus. And it focuses on the greater good, right? So I'm gonna sacrifice these cells in order to stop this virus from spreading. And here comes the Great Wall of China part. So when the Great Wall of China was made, right, the Mongols were a big threat to China. And China didn't go into Mongolia trying to fight the Mongols. So they said, hey, let's build a wall. Let's keep it out. That'll deal with the issue. And so the goal of the plan is like to keep the virus out of the country. It's going to enclose it. It's going to keep it out of the way. And it's going to allow for the plant to stay healthy. And not only does it form these dead cell walls, which stops the virus from spreading, it's also going to reinforce them through various means. So that's HR response. And then our final, oh, sorry, I got a photo here. And um, so the black circles here represent uh, syringe impacts, which is how the virus was like inserted with virus. And so the brown area on the leaves isn't actually the virus causing the harm, but it's HR response, right? So the leaf itself is committing that damage, but the rest of the leaf looks completely healthy. So it's that kind of sacrifice surrounding the virus. So now, callus deposition, um, our final one. And uh, this one <laughs> is best uh, described, how I'm gonna go through it, is pasta and a scab, which are two very different things, but so we'll get into that. So for pasta, um, what does pasta and the defense mechanism have to do? Well. It produces a carbohydrate. So I, I think like 
I don't know, FOSS is an easier way to think about that kind of in a silly way. And so it will produce this kind of pasta in response to stress or damage, be it from an animal or a pathogen or nature, just like drought, it can produce it even. And what this will do is that, like how a scab will block up the outer skin to stop, um, stop blood from coming out, Kalos also is like a temporary way of filling in a passageway. And so it'll fill in these passageways between cells. There's like these little tubes between different plant cells. And they'll fill that in with this um, so-called pasta in order to prevent movement between it. So it blocks some healthy things from being transported like water or nutrients, but it also stops the virus like HR. So unlike HR, it's also a temporary process. So if the plant detects this virus, it can produce this callos can deposit it, block the passageways, but then once the virus is dealt with accordingly, it can open up those passageways. And then here's an example photo of callus deposition. On the left, you have like natural free flowing between different um, cell walls and plant cells. And on the right, you have this pasta created that will block those up, stop the virus, let it be dealt with, and then it can be released again. So now, um, we're just going to do a quick review of what we just discussed, so I can try to make sure you I don't know, have some takeaway from this. So our genes, they are the lock and the key. They need to be a perfect match. They will produce proteins that will identify those viral proteins and alert the plant accordingly. And you have hypersensitive response, HR, which will say, um, all right, we're going to lose some cells here, but it is worth it. It is the greater good. We're going to stop the spread of this virus even if it costs us some of our cells. And you have catalyst deposition, which once again stops that spread, but rather than um, hurting the plant, it just produces this natural uh, blockage. And as kind of a final thought about viruses, is that um, they're constantly evolving, right? Viruses adapt very quickly, and these processes um, cannot always keep up. Like, our genes have to be very specific they have to match it. If the, if the virus mutates, a new R gene has to be created, which takes a lot of time. And so new strains, new pains, um, and they, they need like constant attention, which is why so many people put time into research labs like me in order to um, try to deal with this, because as we discussed, these um, defense mechanisms are all important, and plants are all very important to us. So that's all.